you. Fuck all of you. You're ruining the medium. I wish all of you would just stop buying video games and play Minecraft so you can leave actual interesting experiences to people who give a shit about the medium instead of going, uh, who cares if they're padding? I like the pet interesting gameplay. I want to numb my brain. I play games exclusively so I can listen to podcasts and play on my phone while I'm playing the game like I know you people do because all of you people are ADHD riddled zoomers and you can't entertain yourselves with just one product and you would rather satisfy yourself with three mediocre ones at the same time i hate i hate you i hate you your brain is broken and i hate you there is so much media out there made by talented smart people that you could be consuming but instead you're just getting bland, repetitive recitations of the same gameplay loop over and over and over again because it's what you default to. Your life will be the patterns that you set, all right? Your life is what you default to. The days that you spend are the years that you spend are the life that you spend. The, the, the gaming industry is desperately trying to settle on like a new money-making uh, guaranteed formula now that all the ones that they've been relying on don't work. Like, um, I've been watching, I just watched these the other day. Um, the zero punctuation guy, extra punctuation, Yahtzee Kroshaw, he was talking about this and I think he was totally right. Like, m all the big AAA games that are coming out these days cost $8 trillion to make and they require two years of crunch time and half of the developers commit ritualistic suicide along the development process. And then they finally release the game. Do you guys, okay, Real talk. I'm not talking about how qu high quality the game is. Have you noticed how basically nobody seems to give a shit about God of War Ragnarok? But back in God of, like, 2018, God of War 2018 was fucking amazing and everyone talked about it. Like, Ragnarok might be as good of a game, but you can't deny there's a massive downgrade in how much people are talking about it. And you know why? The reason why is that because in the four years in between God of War 2018 and um, God of War Ragnarok, we saw 80 million games that were just like God of War 2018. That is to say, games were like, they try to elevate the formula of like a, a highly linear, narrative, character-driven, like you walk along a line and your characters talk all the time and you get from point A to point B and blah, blah. It's like all video games feel the same now and all AAA games have basically the same beats that like hit behind the scenes, like beat, 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 beat. So even if they're really, really good, it's not interesting. This is why I can't play the Uncharted games. It's because, like, when you're playing an Uncharted game, or probably even The Last of Us, which I've never played, but I've seen playthroughs, I feel like you know everything that's going to happen. Just because, like, like, these games are basically just books. Why do you think The Last of Us is doing so well as a TV show? The gameplay doesn't really serve the narrative. The narrative happens, and the narrative's good, but, like, the gameplay's just, like, ah, well, this is the part where there's going to be a fighting set piece, and, like, here's the part with the stealth action, and here is the part where you have to search the large area for the crafting materials. You're never go you may be surprised on narrative beats, but on a gameplay beat, like everything is incredibly formula. You'll never be surprised. Um, which means that it shouldn't be a game. It should be a TV show. If the part of the, the media that isn't interesting is the game part, then it probably shouldn't be a game. And look how well the TV show's doing, you know? So yeah, I don't know. Uh, and, and, and like the open world games aren't doing as well lately. Guys, do you remember um, Horizon Zero Dawn West or whatever? Who even played that f***ing game? <laughs> Abysmal take that the gameplay in those is bad. No, no, no. Braves136, listen again. And I'm not going to patronize because I want you to really pay attention, okay? You're like the special needs student in the back, but I believe in you and I want you to go far, all right? I didn't say the gameplay was bad. I said it was predictable and doesn't serve the narrative. So I know that there's like competent shooting in Uncharted 2 or whatever, especially like in the remake because they made it so that you're aim doesn't lock back to center whenever you pop up from cover. However, it's predictable. And like, don't you all know when you're playing a game like that and you're about to get an action set piece? Like, don't you all know, like you're walking with your NPC support character and you're both talking and then you enter a suspiciously large room where nobody's talking and nothing is visible, but there are a bunch of like chest high walls and cover areas and stuff. And it's like, okay, like obviously as soon as I take a few more steps forward, like Someone, it's like someone's gonna go like Allahu Akbar from a far corner of the room, and then there's gonna be shooting, and the support character is gonna say, "Damn!" and you're gonna say, "Huh? 
guess it's time to go shooting again. And then like you do the action set piece and then a helicopter shows up because it's always a helicopter. And then you and then, then you kill all the guys and you get to, and then at the end of it's like all right, and then the NPC before character's like, damn, you sure shot him again. I, I, like we've all played this. We all know this. It's the same in The Last of Us. Um not to take away from the narrative. Like I g I've I've only watched gameplay of the God of War games, but I feel like I feel like are people playing those games for the gameplay? Because when I watch people play those games, I feel like 99% of the time people are like soying out over how cool the the story is and the, the the like the character beats and the dialogue. And it seems like for a lot of people the gameplay itself is like not to say it's bad. I, it seems pretty competently executed in, in in God of War. Like they put a lot of effort into it. But like the main thing that drives it forward is like the really cool interactions between um uh um Kratos and Atreides and like the the guy, Mimir the eyeball guy the like head lantern guy you know I guess I guess in that case there's like enough for everyone I guess I'm just really bored of the cover shooting like stealth stuff The Last of Us Two really was good gameplay just outshined by the Master of Stolen Well that's the thing if gameplay is really predictable to me it stops being good or interesting um you know it's it's kind of like everything gets added on top of itself in a way that you're just old. No, it's not that I'm, it's not that I'm, it's not that I'm old. It's just like every game has to be everything now. You know what I mean? It's like a triple A disease kind of. It's like how like people will say a game is a shooter these days, but no, it's not like Doom is a shooter. The original Doom. Cause all you do is shoot. You don't even talk. There's not even a fucking story. Basically you just shoot. And then we keep adding stuff onto that. And it's like, okay, well, we'll have that, but we'll have like persistent gameplay, story, dialogue, characters. We'll have like this like cutscene, action, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, that's all good. It's not bad to have those things. But we are adding on to a basic element of the formula. And then you, you take a look at a game like The Last of Us 2, and it's like, okay, well, we need to have like basically everything people play because we're like spending $5 billion in this game. So let's do, okay, we have to do the stealth, the combat, we have to do the quippy dialogue, we have to do the hard-hitting, like, emotionally driven narrative set pieces, we have to do, like, the the crafting and the open world segments, but not too much open world, because if you let people run around and, like, dick about for too long, then it fucking matters much. Um, you know, yeah, like, the pseudo-RPG elements, you have to do this, you have to do that. It's like, eh, yeah. What about the new Doom games? The new Doom games are great. I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying, like, Man, the fuck that every game has crafting systems and RPG elements nowadays, though, is so fucking annoying. It's that's That actually does trigger the fuck out of me. That does genuinely fucking bother me. I do hate that a lot. I really do hate that. Um, it takes away from so many games, man. Because, like, if you if you think about it, like... Fuck, I shouldn't be doing this this early. God damn it. It's gonna be a long stream today, guys. Just understand that. Okay, here's a chart. Okay. Bosh, how the hell are you tired of story-driven games because you never, but you never get tired of from software making literally the same game eight times? Um, well, that's the thing, Salty Internet Pirate. Leaving aside the fact that there are subtle differences between the Souls-like games, those games are gameplay-driven. You know, like lore and narrative are, are fun and interesting and all, but ultimately they're gameplay challenges. And they've succeeded, for the most part, I think, in keeping that gameplay challenge interesting and novel. Um, I may know the basic beats of a Dark Souls game narratively, but I'm not playing it for the narrative. I'm playing it for the specifics of the very nuanced gameplay. And um, like the 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 gameplay in a in a Souls like game is refined enough that even if I know I'm about to fight like the big king who fell, you know, um, the specific attack patterns that he has can be like if they're different than what I expect. Like that to me is enough, right? Whereas like the the like Last of Us 2 shooting gallery set piece or the Uncharted shooting gallery set piece, like they all feel the same no matter what. I've played enough of those. You can't tell me that those don't feel samey. Like I know they do because it's like the same thing. It's like you run, you hide, you shoot. Like, okay, I know how these gameplay loops work. Whereas in like, you know, a, a Souls boss fight, like there's a really fun specific challenge of overcoming in a very direct combat arena one guy or maybe two, you know, depending on the fight. But I do kind of dislike parts of Elden Ring because... Elden Ring does get repetitive, especially in its replays. And a lot of it is because of its fucking open world crafting system. And I've never liked the RPG systems in the Dark Souls games, by the way. You want consistency? I've always felt like the Souls games shouldn't actually have level ups. Because I've always felt like if the ultimate point of the game is to overcome a challenge through your skill and skill alone, going back and leveling like up 
to make it easier. I don't I don't like that as an option. If you were focusing on like the pure, you know, like distilled challenge of the combat experience, I think there should be ways to choose character builds that don't actually like allocate power to your character. But that's a personal preference. That's not like me doing a huge criticism. Look, the thing that I'm trying to say about like crafting RPG elements, all right, is like, okay, super quick, all right? Modern AAA games have an unbelievable amount of time and effort put into them, okay? And this is something that really bugs me, okay? Let's say that, like, there is a, a like, you start at point A. Why did I do X for A? You start at point A, and you want to get over here to point B, okay? Now, ultimately, the point of a video game is to entertain you and to, like, get a good cost to entertainment ratio for the time that you spend on it. Like, we're talking a AAA game. They can't release a game that costs 60 bucks, took 200 million to make, and it plays for four hours, right? Like, the goal here is, of course, they want to pad and stretch to an extent. That's fine. Not all padding is necessarily bad, you know? Like, this is why not all games are boss rush games. Even if a game has, like, eight bosses and the bosses are the coolest parts, it's okay to have, like, mook enemies between them so you chain together the fights and get, like, a good, um, like, difficulty wave, you know? Like, you want peaks of difficulty, but you, you want relaxation, too. Video games shouldn't be, like, uh, 10 out of 10 excitement all the time because you get burnt out. This is why Fury is a boss, uh, a, a boss rush game, but every boss fight is punctuated with three minutes of walking down, like, an upside-down floating prison wall while a guy in a bunny costume tells you how high he is, you know? Like, the, the, the you have, like, a huge fight, and it's really difficult, but then it's like, okay, let's chill out for a little bit. And then you, like, fight again, okay? So, let's say that you have, like, you gotta go from point A to point B, okay? And the problem that I have is that, like, it used to be, and by used to be, what I mean is, like, even, like, Call of Duty, Okay, I, I'm not, like, reaching high here. I'm I'm not, like, reaching for the stars, okay? But it used to be, like, if you were going to chain together these points, you had to have, like, stuff to engage the player through them. You know what I mean? So, like, maybe you have some, like, easy guys to take out here, and then, like, over here there's, like, a little crate you can find with some ammo, and then over here there's, like, a group of guys that you can, that are actually kind of, like, a tough fight if you don't, like, ambush them or, like, you throw a grenade or whatever. And, like, you know, it, it, it holds your attention. But the thing that I despise, and the thing that I'm so fucking tired of, the thing that I'm so fucking exhausted of, I'm, like, I'm, I, I can't stand it. Like, it. like, it actually fucking hurts. Like, it hurts my chest when I see it now. And I see it all the time when I play games, you know, is this, okay? Where you'll have, like, that same kind of like path from A to B, okay? But then, oh hey, the game's being really generous. At a point in between A and B, or possibly during all of it, okay? It's not actually a linear path. It's actually a kind of semi-open world, but not really corridor that is peppered with fucking crafting items I am so tired because now they're like, dude, we don't even have to structure out like a bunch of combat beats. The players will get little bits of satisfaction um, every time they come across a consumable because it's like a little Skinner box reward that you have to run around picking up and you have to like grind your nose against the wall to like, so you don't miss out on any green herbs or whatever. And then it's like, uh, you know, and like maybe maybe there's like a fight right here or something. And like okay, but like overwhelmingly, it's like buh, 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 yeah. And then like depending on the game, it's either really so. Like one issue here is um is is like uh 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 Horizon Zero Dawn, where it's like a lot of this is just tedious bullshit, you know. And then sometimes it's like The Last of Us Two or Resident Evil, where it's like okay, it's not tedious. But you do have to grind your nose against every edge of the map because, like, these games run you up pretty hard against your, like, crafting and, and ammunition limits, and you need to get every single one of those. You know what I mean? Bro, you're literally long. You're literally talking about game design. This shit works and is used for a reason. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's used for a reason. It's used to keep hamster-brained retards like you on your fucking treadmill. You're right. It is used for a reason. It maximizes profits for the bourgeoisie yeah you you you're like defending the food pellet that you're chasing while the ground underneath you turns under like behind you at the same speed as your no this is shit this is dog shit you suck i can tolerate it for shit like like resident evil 4 or whatever because for the most part like it's pretty easy to see stuff you know like you the items glow 
And, um, you know, sometimes there's hidden stuff that can be fun to find because it's like a little challenge to find it. But sometimes, man, you're literally just like, Uh, okay, pick up, pick up, pick up, pick up. At least in Elden Ring, like, crafting is totally unnecessary. There's no reason to use crafting if you don't need to because it's honestly kind of a superfluous and underdeveloped system. But, like, oh my god, man. Dude. <laughs> is nobody else tired of this? Do you think it's part of dissolving critical thinking? No, it's just padding. It's literally just, no, the developers are just th going, how do we string along a narrative sequence in a way that keeps people engaged from A to B while getting like good returns on our investment? Oh, well, rather than like structuring well thought out combat sequences that keep a good like flow of, of difficulty, challenge and, 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 and tension. Instead, what if we just like filled everything with like, crafting RPG elements, so everyone's always looking for, like, the little XP things, or the little herbs, or this, that, the other. Insanity, how this makes you mad, but you're still a Souls fan? What? In, in Dark Souls, first of all, in Dark Souls, the, there was no crafting until Elden Ring, and second of all, the items in Dark Souls are totally not necessary to the gameplay experience. Like, picking up consumables or whatever? Also, keep in mind that in Dark Souls, once you pick up an item, you've picked it up, and you'll often go through these areas multiple times. One of the nice things about Dark Souls is that, like, because you die over and over again from on the bonfire run to get to the boss, you usually run through what is pretty short of an area, like, pretty quick, and there's usually not that much stuff along the way. The games are relatively well-structured in the sense that, like, you make it a little bit further each time, and you find one or two more items. Also, Dark Souls very deliberately doesn't have any inventory limits. Uh, it didn't have crafting until Elden Ring. And a lot of the stuff that you found is just like a different type of sword. Copium, it's totally different. I don't know if you got... Maybe you guys just don't play video games, so you don't actually know what it is I'm referring to. Like, much in the same way that I can say, hey guys, wouldn't it be cool if X game existed? And you're all like, oh, of course, exactly. Like Skyrim. Um, maybe I'm saying, like, I don't like it when gameplay developers, like, pace out their games with these stupid, unnecessary RPG crafting item gathering time waste, and you guys are like, oh, but here's another game where crafting items are okay, but you don't know the difference because you're infants and you've, you haven't played video games and you don't know the difference. Oh my god. Somebody in chat, at least a few people understand what I'm talking about. What's the alternative that doesn't create a boring on-rails experience? Basically every game before like 2000 and I don't know what, 14? Didn't have this issue. This is a modern thing. Games have gotten more and more expensive and now all of them have crafting RPG elements. This was not a problem for the majority of the existence of the medium. If you go back and play like really good narrative games or really good semi-linear games from basically any previous era, go back to the Nintendo 64, go back to the PS1, the PS2, go back to the Xbox, all this shit. It's like, oh, wow, all of a sudden now we are once again playing in a game where the, the we just played Halo. Halo isn't chalked up with a bunch of bullshit crafting Oh, you found the one. Like, ammo is pretty easy to find. You're going from fighting set piece to fighting set piece. And like, fuck, man, that's what you're here to do. You're here to fight. Fighting is the point of the Halo game. You're fighting. That's the point of Halo. Not like gathering pieces of like ceramite armor on the ground so that when I get 87 of them, I can upgrade my, my, my armor against plasma attacks by 8%, you know? And then Halo Infinite happened. And then Halo Infinite happened, right? GTA hasn't done this, for example. Yeah, well, GTA is still open world. And all open world games are bad, so. Must skill slash gameplay factors. Just play chess, Vosh. You clearly don't actually enjoy video games. That's bait. Vosh, games are better when you make your own story and not follow a dull story. Okay, then make your own story of, like, play Breath of the Wild and just roll off a cliff over and over and over again until you die of old age. What, what the f*** are you talking about? The, you're paying money for a product! Go play Minecraft. What did you think of Metro Exodus and its open world? Um, there were parts of Metro Exodus's open world that kind of tried me. Not gonna lie. Did, was Metro Exodus really, like, that much better than the previous two games for its open world? I would say no. I don't think it improved on it. The open world... Guys, a huge part of the popularity of the open world has been a way to um, force more effort on the side of the level development and like art asset teams without requiring much communication from or cooperation with the, um, 
the like writing and game design teams, okay? Like if you have a well-structured linear uh, game, that means that everything that the player encounters has to be like a synchronous experience with regards to every element of the game from story, like dialogue, every like the art, everything has to come together. Whereas in an open world, right? Like the, basically the team can just go, yeah, like we're gonna, we're gonna like do this part of the story in like a big snow map. So just make like a big snow map. And if you could like, do a town here, a river here, train crossing here, do this, that, the, yeah, build all that. And like, we'll, you know, we'll like fill in basically because it's now desynchronous. You can walk around and experience stuff in any order up until you get to like the area where the story progresses, in which case things get good again, all of a sudden, crazily enough. But it's like a lot of padding, right? Like, is the gameplay experience really made that much better? Because like, okay, so like before it was like, oh, we can have like a crafted experience in this area that goes on for two hours, or we can have it go on for eight hours, and six of those eight hours are driving around in your buggy car, like collecting meaningless bullshit all around here until finally you arrive at the story zone that makes the story go forward. But you can't skip all this bullshit because it contains the ammunition and the weapons and the EXP and all that bullshit that you're going to need to do this area, otherwise the game will get progressively harder. Wow, now we've made two hours into eight hours. Give examples. I am specifically referring to Metro Exodus here. Piss poor argument. You guys are insane. You're insane. You're, you're, you're all urinals your 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 stomachs are being used by urinals by greasy game developers who are trying to make more money off of the their exploitative business practices and you're like begging for more because you 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 mentally ill degenerate are so starved for entertainment that you will literally play an uninteresting, dull 40 hour, hour experience and think, wow, at least that distracted me from my suicidal thoughts for a little while longer than a good game would have. F you, F all of you, you're ruining the f medium. I wish all of you would just stop buying video games and f play Minecraft so you can leave actual interesting experiences to people who give a shit about the f medium instead of going, uh, who cares if they're padding? I like the pa interesting gameplay. I want to numb my brain. I play games exclusively so I can listen to podcasts and play on my phone while I'm playing the game like I know you people do because all of you f people are ADHD riddled f zoomers and you can't entertain yourselves with just one product and you would rather satisfy yourself with three mediocre ones at the same time i hate i hate you i hate you i hate yeah i'm awake now there we go all right well hopefully someone agrees with me congrats Vosh. you managed to make your media arguments peak retarded today you people suck you're exactly the fucking... I, I, I don't know how I can go on Twitter and find a bunch of people eye-rolling that the new Suicide Squad game is going to be a live service action game, and then you guys in my chat are like, live service act? Well, uh, like, you, you, I have to assume that all of you are totally okay with live service games, right? You're all totally okay with Destiny 2, you're all okay with the Gotham Knights, you're all okay with that shit, because, like, clearly, like, the only thing you play video games for is to have developers piss down your throats. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, that's a step too far. So you're totally okay with game developers using random RPG and crafting elements to elongate a game in an uninteresting, unengaging manner, but you're not okay with them using Skinner box mechanics to do it. Is that right? So you're, you're, so we're okay with one kind of bullshit, correct? Okay. You are, you are no better than them. You are no better than them. You are the same. I agree, but it hurts because I'm playing Shadow of War and enjoying it. Uh, I haven't played Shadow of War. I've heard it's good, though. It's not unengaging, you idiot. Wandering around a big open world? You Have you played, like, Horizon Zero Dawn? No, if anyone here can sincerely tell me that they've played Horizon Zero Dawn or Di Horizon Zero West or whatever, and were engaged by just sort of waddling around the open world, like, chest-humping and jumping up uh, on platforms to get the one of the 87 billion fucking Ubisoft collectibles that are strewn across the map. Hey, guys, remember when Horizon Zero West came out and nobody cared that was pretty funny because a better game came out the same week elden ring that was pretty cool i like that that made me happy when they may spent a bunch of time and money i i nothing i lull myself to sleep with the youtube videos of ai generated horizon zero west people sobbing into their pillows as they spend eight trillion dollars on a game that nobody played because i i guess i hate them i hate them i hate like the, the, the fucking 
you, it's, it's, I, I played Horizon Zero Dawn, okay? Here's your map, dog. Now let's sprinkle the Ubisoft bullshit. Can I, like, just get a larger tip? But... Hey, guys, everyone. Hey, doesn't your ADHD-riddled Zoomer brain make you want to fill up the map? Don't you want to do all the things? You don't want to miss out on any cool collectibles. There won't actually be any cool collectibles, okay? All the stuff that you get is basically, like, really rote and uninteresting. But, hey, like, don't you... Wouldn't it be cool? Like, don't we... Now we have to check everything. Yes, unironically. Your brain is broken. And I hate you. I, 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 I wish they made books for people like you because then at least satisfying your degenerate perversions would be less expensive. Okay. I wish, but I, it was just, just a, a book that has nothing and 98 pages of buildup, one cool action scene. And then they just copy paste the two pages of action scene across so, so thick of a text you rival like the, the Harry Potter series. Okay. So open world games need to die. Yes. Vosh doesn't like map exploration. That's it. He always wants to be engaged on useless, dull, repetitive content rather than finding or making new things to push you. You're defending map exploration as an alternative to useless, dull, repetitive content? If your game is so uninteresting that a direct engagement with its mechanics is dull and repetitive and map exploration so you can find new things to push your characters a bit. Hey, hey, if the map exploration was so fun, why the f*** do you need the incentive to push your character's abilities, huh? If it's fun for its own sake, then why do they need to add the little Skinner box completionist bullshit to it where it's like, oh, that dull repetitive content that you don't like? Well, they have to tie rewards to it because it's all part of the same brain exploitation system. You're, I, I feel like I'm doing a screed on them putting like uh, f addictive chemicals into all the food we eat. And you guys are like, no, we like those addictive chemicals. It's good. We want literally everything to be full of trans fats. And we want literally everything to be full of high fructose corn syrup. We don't care that it's killing us. It's good. We like it. We like it. We don't care. Vosh just likes superfluous bullshit when it's Japanese. No, I hated Persona 5. We literally just want healthcare, my dude. You don't deserve it. What are you going to do with your longer life? Play Horizon Zero West? No, f you. And f free healthcare. Wait, oh, uh, dude, th thanks to our $8 trillion healthcare spending, now people can get 100% in every Ubisoft game before they die. F*** you. Will you play Baldur's Gate 3? If Baldur's Gate 3 was so good, they would make a Baldur's Gate 4. The whole argument comes down to Vosh being a hipster. I, 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 I genuinely do hate you guys. I hate you. You've no idea how sincere the hatred is. It's, it's veiled behind irony, but I do genuinely, I hate you. The game, the game industry is literally imploding right now as they shut down live service game after live service game and p developers are hanging themselves in their bedrooms for their children to discover them on the crunch times that they're doing to build up these Cyberpunk 2077s, these Horizon Zero Wests, all these gigantic f***ing open world crafting RPG bullshit games. And you, you guys are like, well, uh, well, uh, I am suicidal, so longer game times, the completion time, that's pretty much what I'm looking for here, because it does distract me from my, so like, it, it, but quality doesn't matter, because you're just looking for a f distraction, you're looking to numb your feelings. A lot of people just play video games to numb themselves, and I, and I know this, because League of Legends is still a popular video game, okay? I know you mother are not playing League of Legends for like a, a novel, innovative gameplay experience. I know you're not engaging. The whole point of art is to like experience emotion, right? Like the whole point of art is to force you to confront elements of your psyche and of the emotional experience that you couldn't just like sitting alone, sucking on your thumb. But you guys don't care about that, okay? What you care about is like, d a d a damn dog, I collected 100% of all the Riddler coins and Arkham City. I'm so... Wow. Not one of them was interesting, and I didn't even read the flavor text on any of them, because I don't care about it for any reason other than satisfying the ape-brained completionist mindset that is drilling into my skull like a parasite. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. It's all the same. It's okay. Everything's the same. Hey, guys, how many of you have any distinct memory of the last, say, five games you've played consecutively? Or does it all bleed together? Uh, well, video, well, video games are just something I mainly play so that I don't have to, like, you know, it basically just occupies my, 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 the time between me waking up and me falling asleep. It doesn't really matter.
you do politics now? How can I do politics with an audience like that? It's like asking me to paint a masterpiece when my canvas is like a, a flattened, dried cow pat that was left in the sun. Isn't art subjective? Some people like X Games, some people like Y Game. Don't you go postmodern on me. If we give up all artistic critique to the subjectivity crowd, then we'll all be chugging down live service model gameplay for the rest of our lives. It'll all just be Destiny 2 gear score grinding, okay? No, no. No, 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 no. We have to have standards, and I will not have the standards of the medium set by people who have to be on Twitter to enjoy the game they're playing. What's your opinion on sports games like Madden? I YouTube TOS keeps me from talking about the EA sports games. What is a good game? Play Pathologic. It's designed to make all of you as miserable as I feel right now. If, you, if, if art is about experiencing a range of human emotion, then let's, let's talk about something that will re reflect my emotional state. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah, let's show somebody smarter than chat. With better opinions than chat. A brain-damaged infant cat. Him. Yeah, speaking of pathologic. He's so sleepy. Sleepy. <laughs> Here you go. Put him on the blue blend so he does not bring his hands up. I feel really called out for that Destiny 2 comment. You deserved it. <laughs> Vosh, Pathologic is good because of its open world exploration elements. Holy fuck, it's a bread. Yeah, you're catching a ban. If you, I, I don't care if it's bait. If you seriously think the appeal of Pathologic is its open world exploration. Yeah, dude, that's the point of Pathologic. You have all the time in the world to go explore the open world. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, fuck you. No, nope, you're not getting away. You're not getting away with that one. Not in my favorite game. Not in this house. Q. Double permanent. Uh, oh, oh, man. Dude, day one. The fucking pop up on the screen. 11 days remain. 11 days? That's plenty of time to explore the map. Let me just let me just go out into this cool, barren landscape around the city where the fog encompasses everything. Oh, wow. There's nothing out here. Except for Twyrene, which, good luck finding that. Does all this stuff apply to World of Warcraft? Yeah. People have been talking about World of Warcraft having an exploitative gameplay model for a long time. It's only gotten worse. Now they time gate like 50 trillion elements of progression. You can't do anything in that game without activating some kind of better play next week mechanic. So I should stop playing those games? Yes. I genuinely feel like for a lot of people, if you could just like... If you, if you could just take these games away from them and force them to play good ones, I feel like you would all grow up, have better opinions. You hate completionists? No, I'm a completionist. I like getting 100% if it's a good game deserving of it. Does this apply to The Witcher 3 with its open world and its crafting? Those elements really didn't... Those, those aren't the parts of The Witcher that any of you guys remember. Does, guys, when I remember The Witcher 3, I remember like all of the amazing narrative beats, the character moments, the dialogue. I don't remember wandering around the hillside occasionally getting molested by a group of bandits or like a group of gnolls or whatever. I don't remember any of that, like, at all. That's And that was the majority of the experience. It would have been better if they cut it all out. The main problem is a lot of games want to have a big open world for its grandiosity and for its size and its spectacle, but I'm not impressed by a big world. Any game dev studio can do that. Indie games are building open worlds these days. Christ. I'm not, it's, the spectacle's not there. If it doesn't serve the gameplay, then it shouldn't be used. Pathologic has an ostensibly open world, not that you'll have time to see it on your own pace, but the point of the open world isn't to give you some, like, grand spectacle to appreciate. The point of it is to give you a large environment to fucking miserably traipse around in as you try futilely to stop the worst thing ever from happening to everyone. Um, it sets, it's, it perfectly matches the point of the game. If the game is about the emotional experience of misery and depression and futility, the size of the map, 
gives you a like it it it, it perfectly you could not have pathologic without the way its game map is structured you could effortlessly have horizon zero dawn or or this that the other or whatever uh without the open world because the open world is just a superfluous spectacle bait that they've drizzled on top it doesn't it doesn't in any way complement the game structures that they've uh, provided other than the uh, inane crafting RPG elements bullshit, which very rarely adds anything other than like Skinner box jerk off value. The open world boom really ruined a whole generation of gamers. Yeah, it did, clearly. What do you think of Breath of the Wild's open world? Well, the point of Breath of the Wild is mostly the exploration, and the exploration does remain fairly novel and interesting in a way that a lot of these games don't. Keep in mind that we're not talking about, like, all types of open worlds here. Um, if Breath of the Wild is, like, able to use its open world to the benefit of its gameplay, which it does, then I think it's a lot more defensible. A ton of the open world uh, in Breath of the Wild is about, like, not just the spectacle of having a large world, but the, like, emotional experience of, of like, coming across new stuff, which is not the f case in Breath, in, in, not in Breath of the Wild, in, in, in Horizon Zero Dawn, because I played that game and there was no mystery or, like, wonder there, okay? There just isn't. Oh, Elden Ring did this too, by the way. Elden Ring um, did a phenomenal job creating, like, natural vistas uh, where when you expose... Guys, the wonder you feel while playing Elden Ring and, like, entering a new area is borderline magical. That's talent, okay? If you're gonna have an open world, and I have problems with Elden Ring's open world, but if you're gonna have one, that's fu Use it for something. Don't just build an... Just, like, copy-paste a grass texture across, like, five square miles and sprinkle a bunch of red herbs across it. Like, the, the, the point of the open world in Elden Ring wasn't the craftable materials. Getting craftable materials in Elden Ring is incredibly easy. You literally, it's like you, you spawn a bonfire and there's like five trillion of them just right around you. It does, it's not, it's, it's superfluous. It's underbaked. It's underdeveloped. But the open world there does serve like really interesting exploration. And I think a lot of the people who play that game have like magical memories of, 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 of entering Kaled, for example, or of like going into the underground. Remember the Safria River or whatever? Like, yeah, that's really nice. But those were used, like, meaningfully. What about the open world in Death Stranding? The open world in Death Stranding is fine because the literal point of Death Stranding is, is, is traversing and parkouring your way across an open world with packages on your back. That is a direct relationship between the open world and the gameplay. The whole point is, like, which route do you take? Having that be linear would not... There wouldn't even be a game then. It would just be a walking sim. Um, having it open gives you choices in a meaningful way. Um, you know, but this is just not... I love Bosch making constant exceptions to his dumb rules. You just don't understand the rules. Maybe there's a reason I like these games. Do you seriously think there's no distinction between the utilization of an open world and say Horizon Zero Dawn and Breath of the Wild or Elden Ring or Death Stranding, a game which is not even remotely like the other ones we're talking about here? Like, you just don't know. You don't know the difference because you're not smart enough. You're not experienced enough with any of these games. You haven't played any of these games. You're a protoplasm. You're a zygote. In most states in the in the U.S., your mother could still legally abort you. You, 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 I hate you. You, you, these, these games are so different. You can't compare. I, it's not even remotely similar. I hate, holy shit. I love that Vosh is a moral anti-realist, but he apparently has very firm opinions on what essentially good and bad video game design is. The problem that I have is that, like, people don't even understand what I'm saying. I feel like I'm being pretty clear. They, they have no, like, it's it's like, um, well, you have a problem with open worlds with RPG crafting elements. Well, what about famous RPG crafting open world game? Pathologic. And it's like, okay, well, then you weren't listening to what I was saying. What do you think about the open world in Shadow of the Colossus? That's a lot like um, Fury. The point of it is to is for pacing. The point of it is to like um, pace out like the the emotional highs and lows and the uh, the game gameplay experience. That's you, you're not meant to like search every corner of the open world. There, you you go from A to B with a bit of exploration uh, and platforming. And I think it's a good way of like, yeah, world building too. Yeah, my problem isn't with your general points. It's how much of an elitist prick you are about them. Whose YouTube stream are you watching? Have you played Fear and Hunger, and if so, do you like it? I tried playing Fear and Hunger too, but that game was a bit too esoteric for me. I respect the hell out of it, though. I highly recommend Cyberpunk 2077. I don't think I'm going to like Cyberpunk 2077. I don't think I will. So open worlds are good as long as they're utilized in an interesting and not tedious way. Yeah, like I was saying from the get-go, 
The problem that I have is with game development studios that are trying to make returns on their obscenely expensive games, padding them out by adding open world segments, RPG elements, and crafting as a way of um, of, of, of like, like padding through Skinner box mechanics. It's the same thing that Ubisoft does. You can literally uh, Google, like Google, Ubisoft map screen. And like everyone immediately knows what I'm talking about, right? Like the Ubisoft map screen is infamous because in every... Ubisoft game, like Assassin's Creed or whatever else, like they make a map and then they dot it with a f ton of bullshit. That is, let's be clear, not interesting. It's a bunch of safe houses, racing challenges, whatever, but they're ba they're like little nuggets of popcorn gameplay that don't serve to challenge, excite, innovate, or you know, like entrance you at all, they're literally just there to fill up a map screen because it draws out the game. It pay it, it 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 pads it out. It wastes your time. I don't have anything against map markers or like a map having icons to guide you towards content. That's fine. I have a problem with it just being like thrown out there. Like, you know, far here, here's Far Cry. Like it, you know. But again, like my, I'm not principally opposed. Here, you okay? Map screen. Assassin's Creed, Valhalla. It's like, actually, this looks not as bad as the other games. Maybe they've dialed it down recently. I haven't played recent Assassin's Creed games for obvious reasons because it's a trash series. This this one looks more manageable, yeah, than the other ones. It used to be a lot worse. If I went like. Far Cry 4. Just Cause does this as well, doesn't it? Wasn't Far Cry 4 Far Cry Primal, or was that a different one? Oh, God! This is from a Reddit post. This is what a completed Just Cause 2 map screen looks like. So just so you guys know, Just Cause is like the apex of the bad design decisions that I'm talking about here. Just Cause 2's map is like 8 billion miles wide. It's huge. The game has like planes and a grappling hook and stuff. And it's like, you can get around super easy. That's fun. But most of this landscape is just empty nothing. It's like, like there's nothing there. It's just like spectacle for the sake of spectacle. But like, yeah. How long did it take them to do this? Where did it, where, who, who asked? I was probably around 300 out of 368 settlements complete on my most recent run. Are they truly having an innovative and engaging artistic experience, or is this something to just do? Because people do things that they just do all the time. It's fun, is it? People will defend, like, people will say that about WoW, and then they kill themselves. I don't trust you people. You don't know what's good for you. No, it's tedious. It was a podcast game for me. Thank you for being honest. It's not like I don't play podcast games, too. Though I try to make them better than this. Not every game has to be art. Ooh, if you weren't a sub. You see? Look, being a sub does protect you sometimes. Because if you were a white name, it'd be over for you. All games are art. People can have different opinions. No. So video game taste is where you become an authoritarian, dictate what's good or what's bad. Why are all of you people getting indignant? I'm a moral anti-realist and all of my political content is me talking with the highest level of moral authority I'm capable of mustering that I'm about how I'm right and conservatives are wrong. You'll, you'll watch me spend three hours talking about how Matt Walsh is a demon and then you're, oh, well, so... Now we're being authoritarian about our tastes. It's all my taste. It's author. It's 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 authoritarianism in the context of moral anti-realism. I'm just sharing my perspective. I make arguments for it, but it's not like there's any difference in like the concrete empirical moral defensibility of my positions because I don't believe in that. This is bad. Okay. I think we're good. I think I'm awake now. That was all good. It only took an hour and nineteen minutes. All right, close that. Holy shit, I'm so frustrated by the amount of people who have no idea what they're talking about. I work in the game industry, and Vosh is right, of course. Treddy, when you invariably quit the industry, or uh, KYS, over how terrible the video game industry is, I want you to remember all the people in chat who are like, uh, t dude, like, what's wrong with, like, stuff? I want you to remember all those people, okay? <laughs> Just, I want you to remember the villains uh, in this, in this, uh, in, in this engagement.
What are your top three recommendations for gaming experiences beside Pathologic? <sighs> okay, you're right. You're, no, that, that's actually a good question. I should probably end on like, on like a positive note. Not exactly hot takes here. Uh, uh, Hollow Knight is definitely the best Metroidvania game ever made. Uh, it's a, incredibly challenging from a gameplay perspective if you decide to take it that far, but it maintains uh, its interest the whole way through. This is an example of like an open world done well, because the point of a Metroidvania is to construct an open world that like holds your interest with its its novelty and the challenges that each area offers you, and it, and it excellently paces itself with regards to its like upgrades and everything. It's a phenomenal game. There's a reason everyone loves it. There's a ton of content for it. I strongly recommend it. It's also a mostly silent game, which means that if you guys really like listening to podcasts while playing, that's like 50 hours of content right there high quality, artistically engaging content that you can also like listen to stuff over because it's, well, the game's music is beautiful, but it doesn't have like a ton of audio elements, you know, so you can, you, you can do a bit more there. I'm just not a fan of the art style. That's okay. That's your right. Uh, and um, if you want like a, a more deliberately structured experience, that's uh, uh, maybe a bit more retro. System Shock 2, really good. It has audio elements. You do not want to miss Shodan or any of the audio logs. Like you don't want to, and have a podcast over that, but I feel like that game is a masterclass in like in 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 like basically being the apex of its uh, immersive sim genre. You could swap this out for Deus Ex. I think Deus Ex and System Shock Two are about as good as each other. Mm, maybe Deus Ex is better, but I have more fond memories of System Shock Two. Uh, you could go either. They're both really, 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 really good. So you know, just it's yeah. So it's it's both really good. What's like a third one that I really want to? Which Deus Ex? Uh, the original Deus Ex, the one that came out in 2000, 2001, and thereabouts. Okay, um, those are both those are both really good. And then, um, uh, Boblato, you're completely correct. Uh, uh, Outer Wilds, Outer Wilds. We played this one on stream. Outer Wilds is basically like ego death that you would get from a, a shroom trip, uh, condensed into a game. For a game to convey the emotional like information necessary to be comparable to a drug trip, I think, is uh, a huge testament to its quality. It is a legit masterpiece, and more people need to play it. Outer Wilds is unbelievably good. It's so fucking good. Uh, it's ridiculously good. Um, you can also play podcasts over, but you probably shouldn't, because it's it's really good. And you probably want to listen and kind of like embrace the tone and the mood of the area that you're in. Um, it's basically like a toy box puzzle game, where you explore a universe. Okay. Nice. What do you think about Disco Elysium? Disco Elysium is really good, but it's also a lot more niche. Yes. Um, but it's really, really good. But it's really niche. But it's good. It's really good. But it's niche. But it's really, really, really good. But it's niche. But it's good. Okay. Yeah. Those are good games. All right. Have you played Hotline Miami? Yes. Do you think video games that don't require thinking to play shouldn't exist? No. I, I've said. I've, Mortaray, I, Mortaray, your brain needs a little bit less resting because I've said multiple times now that I play games that I listen to podcasts over. I just recommended a game where I was like, yeah, you can podcast over. Your, your brain needs less rest. It needs to wake up. Opinions on Terraria. Terraria is really good. What do you think of Inscription? Inscription's really good. Thoughts on No Man's Sky. I don't care for it. You should play Katana Zero. Didn't enjoy it. Have you played Down 4? No, but it played Rain World. Have you played Shadow of the Colossus? Yeah, but ages ago. Do you think, uh, what do you think about New Vegas? Does this apply to any of what you said? Yes, there are huge problems with New Vegas because it's built on Bethesda's RPG engine. Bethesda's RPG engine f sucks. Skyrim sucks. Oblivion sucks. Uh, Fallout 3 sucks. Fallout 4 sucks. Uh, Fallout New Vegas manages to be good because basically a team of masterclass writers, of ultra-powerful, high-tiered, 9 trillion IQ writers were like, okay, this system sucks, but we're going to do the best we can. And they did. I haven't played Morrowind yet. I need to. But uh, but the, the, the uh, New Vegas is good in spite of the ground that it's built on. What do you think of Blasphemous? It was really good. I got 100%. Have I played FTL? Yes. Thoughts on Hades? Really good. Got 100%. Have you played Stray? No, it'll make me cry. Which Metro game do you think is the best? The second one. Mario, Mario Odyssey? Haven't played it. Not interested. Rimworld? Not my thing. No Man's Sky? Stop asking me about it. Bayonetta? I'm literally playing it on stream. Thoughts on Deathloop? I played it for a bit. Was instantly bored because like a lot of other games, it tries to do too many things and fails to juggle all those balls at once. Risk of Rain 2? That's a roguelike. Uh, it's fun. I suck at it. It's fun, though. How do you feel about games like CSGO, Rainbow Six, and Valorant? I don't like multiplayer games that much. I feel like they turn humans into monsters, and they suck away your life and life energy. 
But if you genuinely enjoy it, like with friends or in a professional setting, or like you really enjoy getting better at it, I think it's admirable. The The main thing that I have no respect for is people who play these games in a non-social and like non competitive context because a lot of these people are just miserable suicide cases i've seen some like hey if you play league of legends or whatever because you're actually really good at it and you really like refining your skill okay like that whatever man uh and if you like playing with friends yeah great anything with friends you know but if you're like just grinding out game after game in silver and you're just not even having fun you're just like man maybe one day i'll get gold my dude do yourself a favor in the time it took you to play three games you could have played a really interesting indie game that could have left an experience in your mind that you'll remember for the rest of your life okay like seriously three games like that's what four hours if it drags long like four hours is enough to play some really interesting games like just one you could literally just go like popular like five dollars or less indie game like short oh wow that's really good play that it's like oh my god that was really good you could really enjoy it you know what's your opinion of replay value in games i don't think replay value is that important um though it depends on the game sometimes with like really expensive games i think it's more important but I think people overemphasize its importance. I would I would rather a game like focus on being really good its first time unless it's a kind of game that is modeled on replayability like say Hades or a roguelike or whatever. What are your um, thoughts on automation games? Uh, being autistic is valid and I support their right to exist. I did get, um, I did I did finish um, a Dyson Sphere program. So do you like the Resident Evil games? Uh, I do. I think that, well, it depends on which one. But yes, I think that RE7 and 8 are really good, um, mostly because they use their pseudo open worlds to the benefit. They're not open worlds, they're more like open areas. And the open area is mostly like you uh, kind of like trying to do resource management and like get chased around by the big bad of that area. And I think like that's interesting. It's not really like an open world. Um, and the collectibles or like MO you find really matters because like e literally like you need every bit of MO you can get. And I think I think that like drives engagement a lot more. You're not really wasting time in those either. What about fighting games? Not my thing. Uh, Prey 2017, I've played it. Uh, it's really, really good. You ever play Moonlighter? No, but I did play Reseteer, a item shop tale, and I got bored of it. So maybe I'd like Moonlighter more because the dungeon segments would be less boring, but I'm not sure. What are your opinion on the Total War games? I've played the Total War Warhammer games. I think they're pretty good. I've beaten a couple campaigns and very hard, but that's probably the farthest I'm going to go. To beat those campaigns on Legendary requires some cheesing that I'm just, like, not willing to do. I have not played Dying Light. Vosh, you're literally describing my entire life. Yeah, stop playing League or whatever. Stop playing. Stop. Stop treating games like something to numb your mind. You wouldn't treat anything else like that, would you? When you guys pick up a book, and I know you guys don't do that often because nobody does anymore, but when you do, I imagine like the book you pick up, like this is something that you read because you're interested in it. There is so much media out there made by talented smart people that you could be consuming but instead you're just getting bland repetitive recitations of the same gameplay loop over and over and over again because it's what you default to your life will be the patterns that you set all right your life is what you default to the days that you spend are the years that you spend are the life that you spend every day that you waste doing something you're not passionate about is another day that gets added to the week to the month to the year to the lifetime of time you spent not being passionate and a finite span that you get before you inevitably die stop wasting that time on stuff that merely holds your attention anything can hold your attention roadkill on the side of the highway can hold your attention as you stare by it that's not enough we live in an era of unprecedented access to incredible things. You owe it to yourself to look those out. It's not even like a money thing anymore. There are incredible experiences out there that are literally free. Like not even to speak of, of torrenting or, 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 or um, uh, uh, ROM, uh, you know, uh, what do they call um, um, emulating, not even to speak of those. Like a lot of these indie games are like two f bucks and they're really good. Yes, but you don't always need to challenge your brain. I'm not saying you always need to challenge your brain. I'm saying that you need to engage with interesting artistic experiences that are not dragged out into a bunch of addictive, homogenous gray sludge by greedy game developers who want to get a return on their overpriced AAA project. That's that's all I'm saying. I'm not saying that like you can play games and listen to a podcast over it, you know? Like, what do you think when I was playing like Hades for the 58 hours it took me to get 100%? Do you think when I got 300 hours into binding of Isaac to get all the achievements that I was like doing it dead silent? No, 
But Binding of Isaac requires a lot of thought when you play it, you know, because the, the way the mechanics work with each other, like, it requires a lot of, like, game knowledge and planning to really get out of build, you know? And Hades requires a lot of mechanical moment-by-moment -moment, uh, engagement that can be really fun and intense and engaging, and I enjoyed my time with that, and I finished. This is one of the reasons why I'm so insistent on playing, like, games that end now, because there are only two ways that you can stop playing a video game. Either it ends, or you get tired of playing it. Those are the only two ways. And overwhelmingly, I think I feel a lot better when the game ends, and I can think, ah, oh, man, I wish there was more, but, like, I really like that. Rather than, like, everything being dragged out. It's like, every game has, like, a end game now. Or, like, infinite... It's like, um, this is, this is why I can't stand, like, Diablo 3 and Path of Exile. Like, they can't just have a game that ends, you know? Or even a game that ends and then has, like, kind of iterations on that ending. It has, you go into this, like, ah, well, hmm, you were able to beat, like, warp level 56, but can you beat warp level 57? And it just, it's just like, you will, it will never end. It will never end. Live service games, man. I thought you were a fan of Diablo 3. No, I'm a fan of Diablo 2. Did you play Repentance or just Afterbirth? I was playing Binding of Isaac back when it was a Newgrounds game, okay? I played everything. Bosch completing 100% Binding of Isaac is exactly the same as playing A League of Legends. Uh, I disagree, but I enjoyed the time that I spent with Binding of Isaac. Where to get those games? Itch.io. Get your indie games from itch.io.